Jesus, I love you because you care. I can never imagine if you were not dead. Jesus, I love you because you care. I can never imagine if you were not dead. Jesus, I love you. I love you. Jesus, I love you. I love you. Jesus, I love you, I love you, because you care. Oh yes, chatters, good night. Hope you're doing well tonight. You know, I was thinking about the war that's going on recently with Palestine and Israel. You know, I was thinking about it. And I know we're not living in a popular time where sound doctrine is a thing, where people care to remember the word, or, or maybe they're just so far gone that they don't remember the, you know, biblical prophecies and, you know, God is not, you know, the center of their life anymore or they don't really believe in these things anymore because it's been so many years to them whatever reason a person may have right but I want to remind you I want to encourage you I want to remind and encourage you that if you don't believe the word of God has come through you can use this war as an example. Do not be like them in the world that run around and pick sides. That's not what God instructs us to do. God instructs us to pray. Because when you look at life, there's innocent everywhere. There's beautiful kids losing their life on us, both sides. Um, and we sit especially for us in America because you know America is a cocky country so they think they're exempt from anything but you and I that has heard the word of God whether you're in God in church not whatever your story may be you still ain't going to have an excuse to God and you and I have to use these things to remember to look up Look up, so my draw at nine. Look up, there will be no excuse for you or for me. Remember, say I hear town over here and 11,000 subscribers may have. And if me when they lick down and grown up on a smuddy and a mumma tonight, remember me tell us, say the thousand that reach over here. But hear me, for those who might not necessarily be, tr trust me. None of us might be where we want to be or where we know God wants us to be. But I am here to remind you, it's time to start push back for the king. You know, when you went top from read the word and you top from pray, you top from do the little thing that we used to do. I encourage you, take your little one, two step back, go back in I'm going to tell you right now, you know. Oh, nobody come come say me never went tell you. <laughs> hey, hey, nobody come say we never went tell you. Because then the gospel you may preach is um, is a gospel in my heart that is for myself first, right? And we are here together as a group of like-minded people, so I don't mind spreading that very message out. But remind your friend and your company where they're wrong. Not because they're wrong them long time, so they know it's your God church. And you and them fraternize all day and chat up in the mouth and go and go out and go do all kind of, all kind of fat. So you feel so you can't minister to them no more. Not true. We're going to talk the truth. Me here to remind you.
say all them the friend they where we mix up and call who's up and go God name and please with me. A true we not a chat got testimony a testimony we do the good things them. But you see if God take you out tight and you know God will bring you out tight. Now but if you say everything I go overnight, you know. But you see if your heart clean, you see if you open your heart and you're repentant and you're knowing yourself that so God me can't do it by myself and you're willing to humble up yourself, trust and believe. He will usher you back to that place. All of us are falling short of the glory of God. Whether you fall by doing this over here, sir. Whether you fall by doing that over there, sir. And we now come with religion. Because that may I preach too, no? Because a lot of you, you're more religious than you're relational. And I keep telling you, if you don't have a balance even with God, you, you go in a church and, and lick hell wide open like the rest of it. Right? Now, but I come and put on your long, your long skirt and your long trench in hat and coat and things say, you more righteous because you speak two tongues. I tell you something, someone who has speak tongues, they're going to have a kid. You know, unforgiving and bitter. And you can't minister to a woman like me with a bitterness in your heart. You think we never see a solid soul missionary, you? When they walk past Peter, Paul, and John, and people say good morning. And to the young people, they made them the example. They don't say for me. Hey, listen to me. Let me tell you something. I want a different type of young person, you know. I want a whole school one. Mix up in the new school. Me a talk about come back to the roots. Where are the mothers? Where are the praying mothers? Where are the wailing mothers? Why we don't see any change in your children? Because you're not praying. You can acknowledge God all you want. You can chat God all you want. God, 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 God. But you're not praying like you used to. You used to dedicate time for God. Me, me I chat it because the whole we've been there. We used to dedicate more time to God. To hear the whispers and the word of God. Sometimes God will drop a word in your spirit. You walk street side, God give you a word. You tell if you grow one corner, you listen, you grow and you give you the blessing. The things were real. Me not chat about the religion thing. Well, for more the things that we can do, we don't go to church every Sunday. God has put it in a, in a heaven back door. Isn't that happening, you know? The one who is willing to know, say, when you're wrong, you're wrong. You're not justified because you're in love or you feel. Do you understand? You're not justified even your own sin because you know, say, God is holy even when you're a sinner. Do you understand? The real way, people, look up. So my joy now, you know. And the more so my joy now, I'm more, the, I'm more the world sweet, you know. Me say the world sweet and no more than any other time yeah, you could have ever want a world. I know the world sweet. Freedom to all man. If you want to call yourself a rat, a cat, a mouse, they must respect you. This is the type of world we are living in right now. And we can sit back all we want and dismiss the things of God, the word of God, the prophecies of God. We can sit and be barbaric and sinful all we want. It is our choice. However, it will not negate. What is to come? It will not, you know, give God any justification for dash with true heaven back door. When we know the word, we was given this by our four parents. Some of you, your mothers and fathers were ministers in the church. But look at you. You are backslidden. So you have no hope even for your children. And what was deposited in you, you have not even had the decency to deposit in your children. God will charge you for it. And if I me do it as a parent, he's going to charge me. Look up. Look up. Some of you because your feet say they are church are comfortable. But you are not walking in your purpose. You have not walked in the ministry God has ordained you. But you have sit in the background like a bump on a log. God is calling you out of the back. He has work for you to do in the community and stuff. But you are so caught up. Some of you. You are the way to find a husband so bad to serve God. God now give him because you're not ready yet. Tap bigger this, bigger that with God. Because God knows your heart. And he knows what you're not capable of doing. And if you give the one man too quick, you're going to turn from him. Because right now you have already turned from him for money and work. Because now all of a sudden since you get a job, you can't go to church again. God, want back to, God wants to be prioritized in our life again. You, me, the goose, the mongoose, and the old lady. He wants to be prioritized in our life. He doesn't want to be the dregs at the bottom of your cup when you don't drink the little taste bad flavor Kool-Aid. He wants to be like the fresh coffee in the morning, the freshly brewed in the morning, and it is the fresh coffee that you expect to taste. The one you love, the Colombian type. He wants to be the source of your life. That you know that without him, 
You have no flavor. But they don't want to hear it. Look, 10 people for the word. One for the word. Two for the word. Who remember Sodom and Gomorrah? And what did the angels say? Because you know Abraham was here begging and asking, God, if this amount, would you save them? Would you save them? Done to the little business of amount. And he said, all right. All right. If I that alone, I will save them. Even for that little bit of nobody. But even then, there was a much righteous down there in Sodom and Gomorrah. It wasn't. And all of we were things so we look back and we are turn out there to look back. Remember what happened? The woman turned her pillars out. Because what was you was given an instruction to move forward, but yet you sit looking back. A pillar of salt. That won't be used for anything and has no use. When God instructs us to do things, we ought to do it. Because some of you are escaping your death when you obey God. Because you don't even know the spiritual things happening around you. You don't even know how many people is working juju against you right now. You don't know how many witches and warlocks is out here with your drawers, your underwear, your socks, your hat, your church skirt, one, one t-shirt, one, one brassiere that you don't even know where they got it at. Sending demons your way. Some of you, you're on a demonic attack right now and you're always sick and you wonder why you're so sick. But you still haven't prayed and sought God in fasting and prayer to figure it out, right? Because we no longer desire the king. And the king is tired of being the bottom of the barrel for us. Whether you're walking with him, standing with him, or crawling with him. None of you, none of us. Save and save backside in the middle run of the corner, halfway, one third, one quarter, quarter, whatever way you, you think you on God there. Because a lot of you are internet Christian. You want to get your behind upon your bed, sacrificially for the king. But yet, you will sit your behind in the house to listen to people that are uneducated in the things of God and has no discipline and to show themselves worthy of the works of God. But yet then turn preach all of a sudden. Who are they in them? And here you go. You're so caught up you don't even know when you're deceived. Even the very elect will be deceived. If you're not careful, they will have, they will have walk from God. And I have no mercy to come back because the world is sweet. It is tasteful to us. This is why God instructs us to kill the flesh. If we don't kill the flesh, we will gratify it. It is what we love to do. I love the feelings of sin. Because by nature, it is what we feel and we love to do. When somebody deals something, you want to cuss them and feel good for cuss them and give them the, the tongue and lash out. Yes, it is who we are. And the quicker you acknowledge who you are, is the quicker God can help you. But when God comes in, he transitions that nature. Because he already knows. He gives you that new nature. Through him. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Why? Through the washing of the word. You can't change your mind if you not change your thinking and your, 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 your sentences them that you are taking your head every day. Every day I get up, you're the past sitting and watch video where them are cuss and tear down people. No wonder why you're limited in your brain capacity. No wonder why you're limited in empowerment. No wonder why you're limited in encouraging yourself. You don't have enough juice to sustain even your own self. But you think you can be out here preaching to nobody. They will not hear sound doctrine. And some of you, you have been silenced by the enemy. Can anybody out there be an example to say the enemy has silenced us at many points in our life? Yeah, we can raise our hand because we're not here for talk foolishness. You have been silenced. The same woman who used to pray and see God and hear the word of God that you deliver to people. You no longer even hear the voice of God. Because you're so sucked into fear and, and life and the things that has happened to you. You have slipped away. Anybody out there can relate to what that feels like and is not ashamed to talk about it. And the struggle of wanting to get back right with God. And no matter how you try to push, it's like you'll get beat 10 steps back. Anybody out there can relate. Because what we have too much of is quiet so-called Christians. You have no testimony. You have nothing to say for the God you serve. God is sick of it. 
He's sick of it. This is why the young people will not come. Because you don't even have the balls to speak your truth. Where people can relate and understand what God has done for you. But you're so busy hiding the truth. Because you don't want to be shamed and you want to be in your pride. And you want, you want the glory to be for you and not for God. You understand? We're not doing religion anymore. Because religion will get you to the water. But it won't force that donkey or horse to drink. It's the wheels in which you can travel a journey. But to go further, you need a relationship. This is why it was never done in the earlier in, in, in the beginning. Because when you think about it, Jesus himself was a fulfillment of God bodily. When you think about it, everything that needed to be fulfilled was fulfilled in him. In the beginning, when you have all these amazing prophets, you got all these amazing people of God, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, all these people. Why they couldn't be the savior? Why they couldn't? They were so amazing. Why they couldn't do for us? Because they weren't capable. God knows that we are wicked. We are wicked out here. So he's the only transformer. And no, no, we can't change with bad ways without him. Don't be ashamed of your experiences. Don't be ashamed of the bad things you have done. If you have changed now, you have repented, you have moved on. Don't let nobody silence you. Most of all, don't let the enemy silence you and tell you, you're da, 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 so you shouldn't, you shouldn't, shut up and more. No, that's how he gets you. That's how you get no freedom. When you think you should be silenced by them. No, you don't need to be silenced when you're giving God glory. That the fact that you ain't stripping no more. You're giving God glory. The fact that you ain't taking nobody's husband no more. And that's the real praise. That's why some of you, God can never use you. You're too busy trying to get the glory. You're too busy worried about what you look like. And not worried about what God looks like on in the inside of you. I know who Anik is. Oh God. Filthy rugs. Filthy rags. But when you see his love, no matter where you are, he's still willing. And he's like no other. So why would I keep running from God because I'm so concerned about the sins in my life? This is where we get it mixed up. Honey, he already knows your sins. When you start building a personal relationship with him. When you start building a personal connection with God. Right? You start doing the necessary activities. Some would say religious activities. But they don't understand. Because when, when you're led by the heart, the actions come after. Some of you, you're led by actions wanting some kind of glory. But this is a different. This is a twist side. When you're led by the heart... You're going to be actionary. When you love your man. When you love your wife. You're going to go out the way to please that woman. And to please that man. Because an inessa is start. He could have an accident and lose his foot right now. He could have an accident and lose our, our finger right now. You're still your wife. You love her so much. You're still going to take care. So you want to have a religion. I go on. You have habitual things you do together. Things that you ensure to do consistently over and over again. But it doesn't stop there. It doesn't stop there. It goes further into intimacy. This is the woman I bored my kids with. This is the woman that um, I've carried me through my hard times. So now it's not a religion thing. Now it's not just, oh, I married her, so I need to cook, clean, give her sex, give him sex, clean the house, carry the pitney good. No, 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 it ain't a religious thing. Because now she can't cook. Now she can't clean. Now she can't give up the punani. So where do you pull from? The religious part? The activity that's still a part of your relationship? Because so long you're married, you're in religion with each other. Commitment. Now, come on. You had a revelation of this thing. But it doesn't stop there. It's the intimacy in you and your wife has shared over the years. It's the connectivity. The closeness. And for, for many that's in 20, 30 years, the longevity. So she, the woman can no longer do the things initially that she did religiously toward you, towards the relationship. And, and keeping a good household and taking care of the children and making sure they go to school consistently and patternlessly. Think about it because it's religious <laughs> to do something patternlessly, right? All right, when you look at it, when you when you pre the thing, a woman can't do none of that again because she's sick. 
or the man can't do that again because he's sick. He's sick now. Can't get the front again, can't do the big teeth, can't cook the pork and the chicken and the rice and peas and the steamed fish. Do you leave her and go cheat on her? Do you leave him and go cheat on him? No, you don't. Because love kicks in. Personal connection kicks in. Relationship kicks in. And this is where the difference is with people. You can go to church every Sunday and not be in intimate relationship with the king. Because religiously you think that it takes just getting up, going to church. How you doing, Valine? Hi, darling. Miss Gloria, Miss Tong, Miss Joan, and Miss Henry, how are you, darling? Miss Johnson, Veronica, darling, everybody in the chat. Think about these words. Think about these things. It's relational. That's what creates our change towards God. That's what make a person go from being too concerned because a lot of people are so concerned about well, me don't want to tap God club me want God me don't want to go to church every Sunday and they start to all of a sudden put all these religious activities that they think they should do to please God stop doing that get into a true relational place with the king and the king will instruct you as to how he wants you to move with him okay because the king is going to lead you in all truth and especially the truth about yourself okay so don't start off with all this religious things they told you of how you should do it. You got to do it this way. You got to do it. Wait a minute. Stop overloading yourself. First thing first is repentance to the king. True repentance. Don't tongue tie your lip. Your, your, and I say, well, maybe we're inside for the one. I bring it. A true repentant heart is an humble heart before the king. And when you're humble before the king, when he instructs you, even when it hurts, because sometimes he'll tell you to let go of that friend that you love so much. Uh-huh. And that man that you've been with for so long that ain't your husband uh -huh. or your wife. Sometimes he tell you to kick rocks to that job that's been sucking you dry. But you don't want to hear that because you're comfortable in a relationship with them, right? But God is trying to transition you. And if you don't take a moment to listen, you're going to lose out on the opportunity of change that is needed in our life oh so much today. We're living in a madhouse, a mad world, while the word of God is floating, floating out, prophecies are going forth, and the people are more caught up in themselves. What the Bible said about the last days? What are we doing? Marrying and giving into marriage, and all these things, drinking and partying. That's the time we're living in. Look now. Nobody cares. Look what they marry and divorce in 2.5 seconds. Huh? 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 There's no value anymore for the things of God and even value for regular morale. People's morality now is contingent upon the most disgusting things. And they say that is morality or their morality or morale. Like, this is my, and you'd be so dirty and nasty. You would naturally think that the way we treat people and being humanistic is the natural way. It's the, the way that human beings should act. No, people in these days do not care about you. They don't care about your feelings. And if you ask me, people don't care if you die. They desecrate the dead. People disrespect the dead. That is how horrible this time has become. So I'm just encouraging you tonight. Chat is another mouth of fear. So if you're not on my YouTube, make sure you're subscribing to us as we're having these conversations. Like I said, we will not give views for these things. But who have ears, let them hear. Who have ears, let them hear. Look up. Some are dry nigh. Your religion will only get you to the water. You will not drink. God has called us to full submission. And I know the journey feels rough. And it feels like I say right now, you're sitting there, pack up your head, tap your head, you know you're going to escape your truth. Talk the truth. Because it's all you go with you. But with that feeling, don't let that feeling overpower you. Okay. Let that conviction feeling God gives you be what guides you towards him. Because we can only speak out of experience, all of us. Let that thing that he's convicting you about, and remember, don't be paying attention to Sally Sue when God is calling you to pay attention to yourself. Well, God, Sally Sue, I do this. And you're not, well, God, God is talking to you because some of you, you're otherwise minded and he's trying to get you out of the crowd. It's too loud. 
He's trying to get you out of the crowd, but you're sitting in the crowd of people, things of people, just things that are loud. Get time apart from the king. And I promise you, we're going to suffer for it. Don't let us be the ones that have to regret. Don't let us be the ones that forget what was taught to us because we're living in a different time. Don't let that be us. Let's remember. Let's go back. Is it going to be easy? No. Is habits hard to break that we have picked up? Absolutely. By the way, it's absolutely. And will they take time? Absolutely. But when you're consistent in your change, God will work with you. When you're honest about what you desire in Him, He will rock with you. All right? So, child, be, be encouraged. It's your girl, Anakin. It is Chit Chat TV because over here we have the Heart Talk, Real Talk conversations. Remember, if you're here and you're not, you know, you want to share this live, share this live out while you're here. Guys, and if you don't have subscription to me on YouTube, please go subscribe to the good guy. And if you're here and you're not in our mob group right there, we share content. If you have content, share it there. But while you're there, remember to share us too. All right? I appreciate y'all, guys. If you don't have me on TikTok, follow me on TikTok too. When I can't get me to a thousand people on TikTok, I can't go live too. Like God. Father God, I'm becoming over there. I'm not, okay. All right, child, let's show me some love per usual. Everybody in the chat, big up and ask of all my transgender supporters per usual that's here with us take this conversation i know these conversations typically the people will be boring typically the people um they don't want to hear it because it pricks your heart <laughs> it may pull on our conviction but just be aware that i don't say anything that doesn't apply to any i don't say anything to you that's not first for myself because what we are in this together we are in this together and we got to get back to a place of prayer Things have turned the way that's turned in your life because you have stopped talking to the king and your fears have become health, you have health and wellness. You go, all right. No, you're not. Because he doesn't want to have to make another situation happen in your life for you to come to him. He wants it to be a willful thing. Going to the Lord doesn't mean you're giving up your life and your freedom. Going to the Lord actually produces true freedom. Because a lot of you think you're so free, but you're not. All right. If you still got to cry at night about it, then you're, you're not free. If you're still not, not, not at peace with that thing, then you're not free, right? So let's not consistently live in a place of delusion and self-manipulation because we like to self-talk too and act like, oh yeah, well, me, can't, me get away with it. It's all right. It's all right. No, stop it. God said stop. It's time for you to stop. Stop convincing yourself you're right when you know you're not. Let's stop convincing ourselves that our sin is correct and we have justification for it when we know we're not. Yes, we get out of control and we're wrong at times. Admit you're wrong and keep moving. Don't justify none of it. Don't act like there's an excuse as to why you did what you... Ain't no, baby, we dead wrong and we move on. We did, the chicken done gone to... Hey, we dead wrong. And that's that on that. I ain't making no excuse for nothing I do. Especially when it's a sin. The quicker you admit your sin, the better. All right? So don't be offended. Don't be offended when somebody comes with good, good word. Don't be offended when somebody that loves you, encourages you in, your, in the things of God. The best thing they can do is to tell you about the Lord. Because when you die and leave money, land, and riches, and notoriety, you're not bringing it down in the grave with you. The only thing that you have left is your soul and have you invested in that um i think it's actually pretty silly of us not to invest in our souls it's pretty unintelligent because when i think about it i say but then we are going to all of you did one day or whatever 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 we have a spirit it's not like all of a sudden we go act like we're not we're not we're not we're not experiencing spiritual things not because our eyes are not open fully and it's only open to a part because if god allows us to see every every demons and angel around upon none none of us would be at peace in the earth god was wise for that right but when you think about it you invest in your physical body you work out you eat you do all this stuff you go to the doctor you take medication when you're sick but then you feel that your spiritual life is all of a sudden you go strong to defeat demons and devils and you're not enough you're not enough oh Oh, so I mean, I eat that. And we eat that. The things say all of a sudden you go rich in the spirit and you have made no investment in your spiritual bank. So I'm encouraging us all together. Let's make investments in our spiritual banks. 
All right? And not forget God. No matter where you find yourself right now, no matter how bad off it is, no matter if it's a bad relationship, a bad situation, God knows what it is. Um, I've seen people in bad situations that he brought out that never thought they could ever come out. Even with things with jail time, I've seen God work a lot of miracles. Just remember, he listens and he hears your heart when it's genuine and it's repentant and when it's true. All right, Chattis, I love you, Sugar. Any one more time, and it's Chitati because over here we have the heart, heart, real talk conversations. Guys, thank you for tuning in. We'll talk later. Love you. Bye. Share the life.